Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my series on how to make an inexpensive guitar kit awesome. Today, we're gonna talk about fretwork. So, first of all, let me clarify, this was not a cheap guitar kit. It was just relatively inexpensive compared to like if you're going to Warmoth or something like that. Those guys, it costs you more for a Warmoth replacement neck than it does for this kit. And the differences are, yeah, there are differences, but they're not, they're not super noticeable if you do the right stuff. So we're gonna take some steps in this series, and we've already taken a couple, to make this kit pretty awesome. If you haven't already, please check out uh, the links in the description below to, well, my kit.com profile so that you can take a look at the guitar kits if you're interested at all in following along. And take a look at solomusicgear.com. They've got, well, all of their guitar kits there. They're the ones who sent me these, and uh, I'm pretty excited to get them, get them done because <laughs> I want to play them. Of course, a huge shout out to Solo Music Gear because they sent me these for free uh, to give them a demo. Obviously, they're pretty confident in their product because they don't mind me uh, working with them and, and being honest about what I see and what I do. Uh, so far, pretty impressed. The only one I've unwrapped out of the two that they gave me is the Telecaster. So I, I like what I see. It all appears to be pretty high quality. Now, I don't know why I'm fiddling with this like this. One of the main differences between a relatively inexpensive guitar kit and some of the really expensive guitars and guitar kits, generally in the, in the neck and fretboard, all right? We took a look at this last time. I checked the truss rod and everything, checked the frets. The neck itself, very comfortable, no problems. The fret ends are actually relatively nice, which is pretty uncommon for something like this doesn't really matter. I'm going to have to redo them anyway because I'm going to dress the tops of the frets. I'm going to level and crown the fretboard. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to do all of that fret work. We're going to blast through it. We're going to do a good job and we're going to make sure that this neck plays every bit as well as one of those more expensive ones. So let's get in tighter, get this guy masked off and get going. All right, so here we go. We got some masking tape and a razor blade and a Sharpie. That's about all you're going to need. Oh, and coffee, of course. So I'm starting off by taping the sides of the fretboard. That's kind of just something I do to make things quicker. It's a little trick that I use. Uh, you'll see why when we go to unmask this, but for now, I like to run a piece of uh, masking tape down the sides first before I go ahead and tape the fretboard itself. So I've got a couple different thicknesses of tape here. I'm taping it off the fretboard, but of course not the frets. That's the part that we're gonna be working on. <clears throat> so I'm doing this to protect the fretboard from, you know, a file or anything like that, that we're gonna possibly do some damage with because you will at some point slip while you're going through this process. So you can use a fret guard and I'll show you that later, but you're really gonna wanna tape it off. That's, that's the way to go about it. So I start with my thicker tape. I make my way kind of down the board here. At the top, it takes two pieces. When I get down further, it's only gonna take one. Then I move to my thinner stuff. And eventually we get to the point where even the thinner tape doesn't fit between the frets. That's why we've got our razor blade. So you'll notice here, what I'm gonna do is put that thinner tape on and it doesn't quite fit when I get down to the next one here. So what I do is I put it against one of the frets and then I push it into the corner of the other one. And I use the back of the razor blade here to make sure that it's kind of really in there. Then I angle the razor blade itself into the base of the fret and cut there so that I'm not gouging into the fretboard and I'm making sure to cover the entire fretboard. Once I've done that, it's very easy to just peel it right out. And here we have it, a beautifully taped off fretboard ready for us to start working on those frets. So the next thing we're gonna do is level them. In order to do that, we need to be able to discern whether or not we have any low spots. That's why I'm doing this. I'm putting some Sharpie on each of those frets so that when I start filing, it'll start taking that Sharpie off and I know that any marker left on the frets represents a low spot where the file hasn't taken it off yet because it's lower. So now we're ready to go. We've got Sharpie on all the frets and I'm gonna start filing them. You make sure you use something straight like this. Don't use a rasp or anything like that. I'm using a single cut ax file. Single cut is nice because it kind of gives you a smoother finish when all is said and done. This is the inexpensive way to go about it, but you can of course get a fret bar or for example, one of Crimson Guitar's uh, fret leveling files or something like that. This is a little diamond file, 
but what you need here is just something that has a smooth edge on one side so that you don't gouge into your fretboard. And what we're doing here is recrowning the frets. So I've gone and I've flattened off the top of them now, uh, doing my level filing, but I need a crown there for the string to contact so that it's going to intonate properly and be easier to play and, and just basically work. So I go into an angle and I kind of round the file over the top to recrown it. You can also use those guards like you just saw. Here I am taking the edges off. I'm basically just rounding over the edges of the frets so that it's nice and comfortable to play. I don't cut myself. My hand moves along smoothly. And you see you get faster as you go uh, if you want to, if you get more used to the motion. It doesn't take all that long. So here I am basically getting ready to polish these. I have to smooth them out. We do that with abrasives. Some people use sandpaper. I like using sandpaper. I don't recommend using steel wool because it makes a mess and gets in between the fret and the fretboard sometimes. What I'm using are Crimson Guitars fret erasers. I think Stumac also makes them. I prefer the Crimson ones. Uh, they're, they're awesome. They're abrasive infused into an eraser and you just rub them back and forth. They got four different grits. You start with coarse and make your way all the way up to extra fine. And it gives you a beautiful finish that is ready to polish and doesn't take all that long to polish because it's so smooth. When you go to polish, make sure you're using a thicker polish. So the autosol is nice. That's what I've got here. Or I like uh, Mother's Aluminum Polish works really well, even though these are stainless steel. Something nice and thick so that it doesn't get all runny and again, make a mess between the fret and the fretboard. And you see the edge of my cloth where I'm polishing there is turned black. That's kind of how you know that you're, you know, getting the right <laughs> getting the right amount of friction and using the polish properly. It turns black as you use it and that's it peeling off kind of a little bit of the metal. So clearly it worked out pretty well. We've got a nice polish on those frets. You can see the light reflecting off them and this is going to make this thing play smoother and more easily and more comfortably. Having that polish on there is going to work well. And you know what didn't work well? This part with the peeling. I used a cheaper uh, masking tape on the edges and I shouldn't have done that because it just kind of tore and didn't really accomplish the task. Still helped a little bit as you can see here. It helped me get some of them in, in kind of groups but all in all it it just kind of broke. Anyway it worked out well. Not the tape so much but everything else and here we go. Alright guys well that covers our fret work. As you can see that's all nice and shiny now. Good and flat, nicely crowned, comfortable along the edges. This thing's ready to go. That's the fretwork completed. That's going to be a very important part of making this guitar kit play more like one of those $550 to $700 guitar kits. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that went. We're going to call that it for this video, and we'll come back next time to work on whatever comes next. This is going to be a... Uh, a pretty substantial series with a lot of parts and a lot of information in it. So make sure you stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it so that it's easier for other people to find. And don't forget to check out solomusicgear.com and my kits page if you're interested in getting one of these and following along. Uh, I will link up the previous videos in the description. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.